Some bloke from Birmingham got his fingers chopped off and accidentally invented the metal style of guitar playing. He teams up with a mentally disturbed man with no shoes and a couple of local cokeheads to drop the very first heavy metal album ever. Deep Purple, with their raging sociopath of a guitarist, dropped the heaviest riff of all time. The first metal band to have a frontman who didn't have the charisma of a limp fish released their first album and somehow didn't get sued by Coca-Cola. Meanwhile in Germany... <laughs> Nwobum started being a thing, which was pretty much just what a denim jacket would sound like if it was a noise. Pretty much every band around this time sounds laughably dated. Something good finally comes out the Nwobum scene after Steve Harris manages to kidnap Zeus from Mount Olympus and forces him to sing for his band. The greatest band of all time unknowingly invents a genre that will preserve the virginity of many males for years to come. Four spotty oiks from LA finally bring metal out of the dark ages and increases the cool factor by at least two. Swedish guitar virtuoso recorded himself <laughs> off in front of a mirror and the result was the first neoclassical metal album ever. Probably the best album with the worst possible artwork. Not a strong year for metal overall with just a few mediocre releases. Bands increased in heaviness but decreased in name originality. Apparently this album's really great and influential, but it's way too corny to actually listen to. The infamously skull-crushing grindcore band Jethro Tull wins the first Grammy for best metal performance. Well deserved. Every other band might as well have just given up at this point. The highest selling metal album of all time gets released, featuring such classics as Enter Sandman and Nothing Else Matters. This year saw the release of both the nerdiest and the heaviest albums of the 90s. Some white middle-class Scandinavian kids got into fist cuffs. The single greatest metal subgenre of all time is given birth to. Guys finally figured out how to make a guitar sound half decent. Power Metal finally gets an album that doesn't sound like complete ass. <laughs> Prog Metal done badly. Prog Metal done perfectly. Everything in metal up until this point was just leading up to this masterpiece. Oh. Oh. Not you. You know, I gotta be honest, I think these two years might just be the greatest two years in metal history. Suddenly, all metal bands look like this. Strap a Young Lad disbanded, Led Zeppelin reformed, and Demure released their first album. Absolutely cursed year. Blid. Iron Maiden become the first metal band ever to win a Brit Award, beating Coldplay for best live band. Absolute travesty. Ingve Malmsteen is still releasing albums for some reason. An unsettling reminder that Machine Head still exist. Prog Metal is cool again for some reason. The first album from everybody's favourite smug-faced shreddy cherubims. Megadeth saved themselves from descending into complete irrelevancy. Sockweb disbanded apparently. Don't know who they are, but that's a pretty sick name. Memes aside, Rip Chester. I live for how salty this album made metal elitists. Most incredibly underwhelming comeback ever. This was literally the only completely non-boring thing that happened in 2020. Only took like 15 years, but we finally got a f deathcore band with some personality. Phil Anselmo goes on the road with his Pantera karaoke band. All right, mate. Do that. Do that. Then do that. Nice one.